Welcome to Lake Hodges, a century-old reservoir in San Diego County, California. But looks can be deceiving. This quiet lake is home to an enormous war, a war involving billions of ants. This is a battle of one of the world's largest super colonies of Argentine ants. The large ant super colony, unimaginatively named the Very Large Colony, is in the middle of a decades-long deadly battle with the much smaller Lake Hodges colony. The scale of this war is huge, involving billions of ants. These Argentine ants are not native, but invasive immigrants via New Orleans from the Portuguese Madeira Islands, but originally from Argentina in the late 19th century, hence their name. Their new environment has proven ideal, helping them grow into a super colony covering the entire state of California, nearly a thousand miles long. All these billions in the super colony got along fine until they met with a much, much smaller separate Lake Hodges colony, which although millions strong, only covers about 18 miles around Lake Hodges, but with a slightly different gene pool and smell. This enormous size disparity does not take away from the ferocity of the battle. This is one of nature's most intense conflicts, a battle zone where two vast ant empires clash in an endless war giving no quarter. What happens here makes Game of Thrones look like a playground squabble. While they are the same species, they have different chemical signatures, and that's all it takes to turn family into mortal enemies. Along their border, millions of ants battle to the death. This isn't random violence, it's sophisticated chemical warfare with complex tactics and strategies. The battle line is just a few centimeters wide, but stretches for miles, creating what researchers call an infinite killing field. The numbers are staggering. In just six months of monitoring this border, researchers counted 15 million ant casualties. That's more than the entire population of Los Angeles, all fighting in a space narrower than your finger. And this isn't a temporary skirmish. These battles have been raging nonstop since researchers first discovered them two decades ago. But Lake Hodges isn't unique. Similar conflicts rage worldwide. Four mutually hostile colonies battle around Kobe, Japan. A separate colony holds a stretch of Catalonia's coast in Spain. Wherever chemically distinct super colonies meet, war erupts. The mathematics of combat first analyzed during World War I, explains their success. When many fights occur simultaneously, the side with greater numbers always prevails, regardless of individual fighting power or tactics. It's not about who's stronger, it's about who can field more soldiers. Their battle strategies are remarkably sophisticated. Chemical warfare through pheromone deployment, mass mobilization of workers, territory marking and defense, resource denial tactics, and coordinated assault patterns. These battles aren't just ant drama. They have real ecological consequences. The constant warfare maintains a kind of border equilibrium, preventing either colony from expanding further. This creates a narrow zone of intense activity that affects everything from soil chemistry to local insect populations. Researchers continue to study these battles, trying to understand how such enormous societies maintain their borders, and what triggers the recognition of friend versus foe. The answers could help us understand not just ant behavior, but the nature of social organization itself. The impact of these Argentine ant invasions goes far beyond just ant warfare. These tiny invaders are literally reshaping entire ecosystems, creating ripple effects that cascade through food webs in ways we're only beginning to understand. In California, the changes are dramatic. Native ant species vanish completely. Horned lizards starve, unable to recognize the tiny invaders as food. Local insect populations collapse, and even bird populations shift as their food sources change. This image shows the extent of the disappearance of native ant species after the introduction of the Argentine ant. In South Africa's unique Thinbos heathland, known globally for its high biodiversity and many endangered plant species, the impact is even more profound. Native ants once played a crucial role by planting seeds carrying fatty nutrients. They carry these seeds to their nests, 
eat the fatty portions, and discard the seeds, essentially gardening the ecosystem. Native plants struggle to reproduce. Invasive plants gain advantage. Native insects lose food sources. Birds and reptiles lose prey species. Birds and reptile eggs are threatened, and entire ecosystems simplify and homogenize. However, nature might have a surprise in store. These seemingly unstoppable empires have an Achilles heel, their own genetic uniformity. Dr. Andrew Suarez's research from the University of Illinois reveals a startling fact. A single native Argentine ant colony contains more genetic diversity than California's entire super colony. This lack of diversity makes them vulnerable to disease outbreaks and environmental changes, temperature fluctuations, new competitors, and even climate change impacts. We're entering what scientists call the homogenous an era where a small number of super spreading species expand worldwide and increase the homogenization of the Earth's biosphere, something we humans should really be familiar with. But even these seemingly unstoppable empires have their limits. And Argentine ants are both a warning and a preview of this future. Consider the story of Biosphere 2, a grand experiment by the University of Arizona in Oracle, Arizona, designed to be completely self-contained. In 1991, a multidisciplinary crew of eight stepped under a global magnifying glass when they sealed themselves into Biosphere 2 and tried to keep all of the ecosystems balanced and isolated. Despite all human efforts to control it, a single ant species, the invasive crazy ant, Paratrechina longicornis, found its way in and completely reshaped the carefully engineered ecosystem. They clogged vents and chewed on wiring, killing off other ants, crickets, and grasshoppers, and put pressure on other organisms in the ecosystem. After the biosphere experiment ended in 1994, the organism that rules biosphere 2 these days is the ant. Ants team across almost every surface of the three-acre facility's seven biomes, an overstimulating phenomenon that gives some visitors nightmares of being swarmed by them. It's a perfect metaphor for our relationship with nature. Even our most controlled environments can be transformed by these tiny engineers. Their success challenges our assumptions about ant control and adaptation. Ants thrive in human disturbed environments. Ants exploit our global trade networks. Ants reshape ecosystems to suit their needs. These tiny empires remind us that we can't always predict or control how species will respond to our reshaping of the world. They're both a warning and a wonder, proof that life always finds a way to surprise us. Remember, the next time you see a tiny ant marching across your counter, you might be looking at a foot soldier of Earth's largest empire. Thanks for joining me on this journey through an ant universe. If you enjoyed this exploration of one of Earth's most successful creatures, don't forget to like and subscribe for more fascinating stories about our natural world.